Yo, it's Mo Salim here from TripleUrt.com and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about five of the most estrogenic foods on the planet, all right? Each of these foods is very high in phytoestrogens and phyto basically means plants and these are the estrogens which plants produce to support their own growth and their defense mechanisms as well. So researchers at the University of Toronto analyzed more than 100 of the most commonly eaten foods and analyzed how much estrogen content each of them contained. And in this video, like I said, I'm gonna go over five of the ones that ranked most highly on this list. All right, so the first food we're gonna talk about is soy. Now, some people consider soy a health food, but the bottom line is that the researchers from the University of Toronto found that soy actually contains more than 100,000 micrograms of phytoestrogens per 100 grams of soy, all right? So that is extremely high. And the problem with soy is that it can, is in nearly every single food that we eat. If you take a scan into your pantry, it's very likely that you'll see soy added as an ingredient in the formula. Now, 100 years ago, the average consumption of soy in the United States of America was somewhere less than 5%. But today, nearly 30% of all calories consumed come from soy bean oil alone, all right, in the US. That is pretty astounding, just soy bean oil. This does not include all the other products that contain soy as well. And another thing to understand about soy is that 93% of it in the United States is actually genetically modified. So it's definitely something that you want to avoid. So the phytoestrogens contained within soy are known as isoflavones and they are what's responsible for exerting the estrogenic influence. So as far as the research is concerned, in one study, 99 male men that were in a sub-fertile couple, which means that they were unable to reproduce, were assessed for how much soy they consumed based on 15 soy based foods, all right? And when they analyzed uh, the data, researchers found that the men consuming the highest amounts of soy had 41 million less sperm per milliliter compared to the men that did not eat soy, all right? So that is a pretty solid indicator that soy is not doing male health at least any good. In another study, 15 men were divided into three groups and in the first group the men basically consumed milk based protein and the second group contained low isoflavone soy protein and in the third group they contained high isoflavone soy protein all right and after 21 days when they re when the researchers analyzed their blood samples they found that the men eating the high isoflavone soy protein that's kind of a tongue twister had the lowest amounts of dihydrotestosterone and testosterone, all right? In case you didn't know, dihydrotestosterone, AKA DHT, is the most potent androgen in the human body. So decreased amounts of it is definitely something you wanna avoid, all right? As, and another thing to keep in mind about the research is that a lot of it is driven by financial incentive. And since the people that, can t uh, that control the most amount of money in this department, you can say, are the major soy producers themselves, all right? So that's something to keep in mind because there are some studies that have found soy to have no negative influence, but I'm positive that if you dig deeper into the researchers responsible for conducting the study, you will find some sort of affiliation with some soy board or lobby or something like that, all right? So soy is the first food you definitely want to avoid because of the extremely high phytoestrogen content. Now, the second highly estrogenic food is flaxseed, all right? And the surprising thing about flax is that it contains more than four times the phytoestrogens as soy, all right? Whereas soy contained 100,000 micrograms per 100 grams of uh, content, this flaxseed contains 400,000 phytoestrogens, 400,000 micrograms of phytoestrogens per 100 grams, all right? But an important point to understand about flaxseed is that it actually contains a phytoestrogen known as lignans, and there are many different types of phytoestrogens, whereas soy contains isoflavones, flaxseed contains lignans, all right? And there is some research that shows that lignans are able to be digested by our gut microbiome, which is the probiotic micro 
bacteria that's living in your gut is able to properly digest the lignans which would reduce its estrogenic influence. So there's not a lot of research on the effects of flaxseed on male health. I've actually made another video about this topic which you can check out below and in that video I basically went over some anecdotal research where there was a university student who was tracking his own results and found that his testosterone levels were slashed in half after consuming hefty amounts of flaxseed but other than that there's not any solid evidence indicating that flaxseed can lower testosterone levels other than the fact that it contains very high amounts of lignans all right and like i mentioned before our hum our body has seen not more not our body our microbiome all right so the bacteria living in your gut has adapted over thousands of years to properly digest the lignans which would drastically reduce the estrogenic exposure but for me personally i avoid flaxseed all right because the high phytoestrogen uh, composition of it is enough for me to not include it in my diet but if you are eating it then the only recommendation I can make to you is to keep your consumption on the relatively lower side as to minimize the influence. But as always, the best thing to do is to experiment and see how it affects you. All right. Now, the third highly estrogenic food, which I was pretty surprised to read about, is multigrain bread. All right. How many times have you gone to the grocery store and seen a white bread, brown bread, and multigrain bread and opted for the multigrain bread thinking that it was more quote unquote healthy? Well, the bottom line is that multigrain bread actually contains 5,000 micrograms of phytoestrogens per 100 grams, all right? And it ranks very, very high on the list. Now, we went over previously soybeans and flaxseed, and those are by any means the most phytoestrogenic rich compounds because they contain higher than any other amount, which is what was it? Soy was 100,000 micrograms and flaxseed was 400,000. Those are way higher than anything else. But multigrain bread actually contains 5,000, which is still very, very high, all right, given compared to all of the other things. And the reason for this is because multigrain bread contains sesame seeds. And sesame seeds are what's actually responsible for the estrogenic influence. So the bottom line, avoid multigrain bread. If you are a bread lover, then opt for... I'd say whole wheat, brown, rye bread, something like that. But there is evidence showing that overall bread is not great for you as a man. But uh, that's topic of a whole different video, all right? But multigrain bread, definitely avoid it. And that brings us to the fourth highly estrogenic food, which is licorice, all right? Now, licorice is something that's consumed as a candy, breath freshener, and as a flavoring agent in many different countries. But the thing with licorice is that it contains the active ingredient called glycrazinic acid. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. And uh, this glycrazinic acid is, I'll just call it G-acid. So G-acid basically is very high in estrogen as well, phytoestrogens. It contains 1,000 micrograms per 100 grams. And in one study, men that were given, I think it was 7 grams per day of licorice every single day for a week experienced a slashing of half of their testosterone levels, all right? So before seven days of eating licorice, their testosterone levels were double compared to what they were seven days after, all right? So definitely avoid licorice, but I'll mention that another point in the study was that their testosterone levels immediately began to elevate after cutting licorice out of their diet, all right? So having it a one-off time might not hurt, but personally, I don't have licorice. I never tried it, but I am familiar with the fact that it's a very commonly consumed candy up in, uh, what is it, the Nordic regions and Scandinavian regions. So if you do love it, I mean, having it one off, I'm not sure if it would have that drastic of an influence, but the estrogenic, the estrogenic influence sorry, is very evident, all right? And finally, we come to the fifth highly estrogenic food, which is conventional meat and dairy all right now the problem with the uh, animals that are brought into a farming environment is three things all right first thing is that they are given a bunch of exogenous hormones because they want the animals to grow as fast as possible and they want them to produce as much milk as possible so they are basically given hormones so that they grow artificially quickly all right the second thing is that they are fed an unnatural diet so animals that are used to eating grass and grain uh, grass sorry 
in the wild, they are being fed grains and an unnatural feed, all right? And the third thing is antibiotics. And the reason for this is because the animals are artificially growing too quickly. They're being fed an unnatural feed. And these are the reasons that then they are getting sick and then they are injected with antibiotics to make them less sick and uh, edible, I guess. I don't know, like keep them uh, alive long enough. But these three reasons are the reason that I try to stay away from conventional meat and dairy. But uh, as far as the research is concerned, there is not much that has come out regarding its effects on male health other than the fact that there was one Japanese study in which men consuming uh, milk experienced uh, significantly higher estrogen levels and testosterone levels after the fact, all right? But other than that study, it was not actually clear entirely what the methods and procedures were, so I'm not gonna state that as a solid uh, piece of evidence that's backing up the fact that dairy is estrogenic, but it is a study nonetheless, all right? And uh, the reason for this, I believe, is that, I mean, the food industry giants are huge. And uh, as I mentioned previously, a lot of the scientific data is actually driven by financial incentive. So it's not always the best idea to assume that just because there is no research supporting a particular fact, that that fact is necessarily untrue, all right? And that fact being that conventional meat and dairy is not good for you, all right? So that about wraps it up, the five most highly estrogenic foods on the planet and meat and dairy is actually the fifth which is not ranked on that scale which uh, the University of Toronto researchers put together so I'll say four of the highly most estrogenic foods on the planet with the fifth one being a note of caution for you all right and uh, if you want to check out a free cheat sheet that goes over 10 highly estrogenic compounds that are roaming around your house from the plastics and chemicals to soaps and deodorants, then download the cheat sheet below because that will tell you exactly what steps you can take to reduce your exposure to these chemicals, all right? With all that being said, this has been Mo Selim from TripleYourTea.com coming at you from Medellin, Colombia, and I hope, sorry, it's not Colombia, it's Colombia, see? And uh, I hope that this video has provided you with the information you were looking for. And I'll see you soon.